This is a Stock Train Reality Podcast, episode 153. It, it doesn't always make sense why your P&L is what it is in that trade. It, again, it just, it, it takes you down another rabbit hole and, and it's like, all right, well. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host. Some say he has the voice of an angel, Clay Trader. And I apologize, listeners, but I only sing on the live webinars with Clay Trader University students. So you're not going to be blessed by my voice. And yeah, some people do say I have the voice of an angel. Uh, other, oh, yeah, people yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> other people have said I. Other people have said I'm the songbird of my generation. But uh, <laughs> again, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, and Chez, he's uh, he's heard it many times before. He, he's been blessed many times, and I I like to stick to the story that he is a better human being because he has been blessed by my singing ability. But Chez, would you agree that? Um, would you call me the songbird of my generation? Uh, I feel like I might be contractually obligated to say, yes, Clay, you are the songbird of your generation. Now, here's a little movie trivia, though. Do you know what movie that comes from? See, I, the thing is that I, I was on the webinar, so I know what movie based oh, on that are. answer, but yes, yes. All right. Do you well, want, do you want to tell the listeners? Step Brother. So if you're... Uh, there you go. If you're, so yeah, Step Brothers, but I used it last night, and I was kind of I'm like I feel like I'm plagiarizing this but I can't remember but some of our members did some quick research and yeah they confirmed yeah you weren't sure from, if you were the uh, originator of that quote and if you were you were so happy with yourself you said oh I, wow it's really good and they were like I feel like I made have plagiarized this from something and then with a little bit of research we did find out the origins but that's yep. okay yeah but uh that's a that's a great quote though but uh no in all honesty I probably have a very terrible voice but um I'm sticking to I have a, a songbird I am the voice of the angel and that's why people sh people don't even show up to the live webinars to learn anything. They just show up to hear me sing because that's how good I am. And I think I'm going to try it out for American Idol soon. But uh, anyways, moving on. Today we're bringing back a former guest, Mr. B. And I know his, fir his, his first name starts with an F. What do you... Because he is just Mr. B. That's just what I know him as. He's yeah, got Farrell? the avatar. Yeah, Farrell is is that's right. That that sounds familiar. But yeah, that's how like just He'll entrenched always be Mr. He B is. to me though. Yeah, exactly. He's so entrenched, so he will always be Mr. B to me. Also, he's got the avatar of the B. If you've spent any amount of time uh, in the chat room uh, for you listeners, then you know exactly who I'm talking about when I say Mr. B. Um, and because it's a welcome back, there's not really any format. But we he's got all sorts of good stuff. He's been through a lot. And he continues to, to chug, he continues to learn. And yeah, all kinds of good quality rabbit holes we go down, or I should say probably bee, beehives. We visit all kinds of beehives <laughs> that are just very valuable. And I am 100% confident that uh, if you stick through the whole thing, you'll pick up at least one nugget of wisdom. So without further ado, let's hear from Mr. B. Mr. B, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's, uh, we've, <laughs> what do we, is this like the fourth time we've tried to do this? I, it's, it's been, yeah, let, let's go through a little history recap. That's by the way, that's not the philosophy question I have to ask you in just a second. That's, this is kind of, uh, I'm more, I'm warming you up here, B. I'm warming you up. Let's see. The first time it was post office problems, right? The first time. Yeah. USPS, uh, did not deliver on time. So, so that would be the cancellation number one. And cancellation number two, I'm pretty sure that was just straight up the Black Mamba virus that hit uh, my household. Yes. But uh, here we are. So I appreciate you sticking with us. And um, I, for those of you, I did do my homework. Mr. B, the reason this is kind of just sporadic right now is uh, he was on episode 71 of the podcast. I was reading through the show notes and it actually brought back a lot of good memories. There is uh, some good stuff in there. So if you have, if you want to kind of get more context, and we'll, we'll gain a little bit of context. We'll have him nutshell things the best he can. But episode 71 from the podcast uh, was the last time Mr. B was on. Uh, but I want to jump in with this. And last week, you don't know this because you haven't heard last week's episode, but last week, Ches and I talked about, uh, you know, the fine line between ambition and self-control. 
So B, my question to you is in your opinion, and this is just a talking point here, um, and Chaz, you can jump in, whatever. Uh, at what point is something no longer ambition, but rather a lack of self-control? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, wow. You, you're really jumping in, huh? Um, yeah, I told yeah, you. Really I was starting this one off right out yeah. the gate. Huh? And a little context, a little context here. I, 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 I am, I guess, almost currently. But as I was waiting for everybody to show up for the podcast, there was somebody in the chat room. And um, in my, in, in my uh, opinion, we have this is what kind of spurred this on. Also, like I said last week, we talked, we had this little conversation here. But that's where this is coming from. This is not random. Just having a conversation with somebody, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get Mr. B's thoughts on this. I, I thought that would be a good kicking off thing. So, yeah, what are your thoughts? If if you're talking about wanting to learn how to trade, you know, at, yes, be ambitious. Everyone's ambitious. I'm ambitious. Um, but losing control. Uh, trading without an education, trading with live money, just getting into things that you have no clue about. Um, if if you, I, I know with myself, if I lay out a plan to do something, and I'm breaking that plan early on to maybe head off in another direction because you know there was a shiny object down there. It, it already shows that I don't have any control. And boom, I, I, you nailed it. That was, and for you listeners out there, there it's, it's literally logistically impossible for me to know what the conversation from last week was because, uh, to be honest, we recorded last week's episode about five hours ago. B, you just nailed it. You just nailed exactly what Ches and I, our, our thoughts on it was, was, Ambition is setting up a plan, saying, presenting a plan that's in most cases a rational plan. Like, okay, yeah, hey, that that makes good. That's an ambitious plan to follow. But absolutely, as soon as you break the plan, as soon as your actions no longer match up with your words, then yeah, I I would say that's where ambition has now uh, shifted over into lack of self-control. I mean, B, nailed it, didn't he, Chaz? Yeah, he absolutely did. And I just think it's, it is so true that it is a fine line though, between, you know, being ambitious and having self-discipline. And yeah, I think it's funny that he absolutely nailed it without having no context as to last week's podcast, considering we recorded a couple hours ago. Right. Yeah, that was pretty good. But uh, basically what's going on is there's somebody in the chat room. I like this person. This person showed up uh, probably about a month ago. They've lost a bunch of money. They've been struggling. Um, and w- throughout, a, a, I don't want to name this person um, via their uh, avatar, but I think B, maybe you've even interacted with them, but uh, they got a bunch of feedback and they were like, all right, you know what? I, I need to tap the brakes. And they, they said all the right things. And now all of a sudden I learned, you know, just 20 minutes ago, they're back to using real money all of a mm-hmm. sudden. And, you know, when I try to pry this out of them, they were, you know, well, you know, most times I'm on paper and it's only if this, this, and the other is the is true. And if that's true, then yeah, um, nobody you know, I'm wants on paper, to get, but no one wants to get chewed out <laughs> by big bad clay. Well, I, you know, don't, don't give me anything to chew you out for. And, uh, you know, and long story short, yep, this person in some search situations is now back to using real money. And, and I just flat out told him, I said, look, I like you. That's why I'm giving you the tough love. I want you to succeed. But what you're saying now, uh, your actions are not matching up with what your words were several weeks ago. And it just snapped on me again. Th- this person talks in an ambitious mm-hmm. game. But right now, unfortunately, the, the, the self-control component seems to be in uh, an underlying issue. But yeah, uh, I thought I was going to stump you for sure. But you thought through that one like a I champ. I was just going to keep talking I, I can't until remember. you jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. That's that's always a good strategy. Um, but anyways, yeah. So we'll, I guess, kind of get back on topic, even though there, there's really no topic. But um, do your best um, to kind of where were you the last time we talked about? You know, back in episode seventy one to kind of uh, stand up for B here a little bit. This has been well over a year ago. So if he's kind of uh, just cut him some slack here. But to the best of your um, that you can remember. 
where were you last time we were talking on the podcast and kind of nutshell um, our, our interview from episode 71. Okay. Um, I, I think, and I, I didn't go back and look at the notes, the, the show notes or anything. Uh, I'm just going off of the time frame that you've given. Um, I believe it, it was when I was really getting more in, into advanced options and, and your, you know, advanced course. Uh, I had done the, all the other courses and the basic options course. And I, I just wanted to learn more. It, to me, it was the, the ambition, the education. Um, I, I know I said on the last show that it, to me, it, it, it wasn't just something I wanted to do. I, I really had a genuine interest in trading, and, and that's why I wanted to learn about it and the different ways to go about putting trades on, and options really opened that up to me. Um, Chez was also doing it at that time. I think he was quite further ahead than me, and it, it worked out very beneficial to me in, in a selfish way, but I was able to bounce a lot of things off of him that he would you know, have the ability to break down and, and maybe explain to me in a uh, kind of dumb way. That, And I only charged you by the sentence too. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> and I do, I do remember us talking about that though. And I was, you know, was happy. I'm always happy to help out people, especially when they're doing stuff similar to me, but yeah, go ahead. And uh, I, I've really spent the, the good, like a, a very good part of the last year, only trading advanced setups and, and uh, when I say advanced setups, I, you know, anything that involved selling premium uh, for anyone new that's out there. Um, it, it took me a long time to grasp it. I, I did your course, Clay, and it really helped me along, but I was very, very uncomfortable with naked positions. Um, like super uncomfortable. It, to me, it, it just did not make any sense at all how you could risk uh, potentially an unlimited amount. And uh, to put it into perspective, you know, if you're talking about like a, a ETF in the $40, $50 range, uh, you know, selling premium in that could be a five or $6,000 loss for – a 90 or a hundred dollar win. And that's very different from what I had learned in all of your other courses. Okay. So it was a kind of RVR risk versus reward thing that was throwing you off. Just to refresh my memory, do you remember why, what ultimately led you to advanced options? Because I know that's where you are now, and I know that's going to be probably a lot of the, the topic of conversation here. So for listeners, just an, an outside perspective, what ultimately led you into advanced options? Was it because it fits best with your day schedule and your job? Or uh, do you remember why exactly you transitioned into, into this type of trading? Yeah, after doing the basic course and and seeing some of the other guys in the chat room that were further along than me uh, talking about selling premium and, you know, why would you buy a call when you can sell a call and get the credit in your accounts so you can actually use it at the same time to make another trade? It, it The whole concept just intrigued me. It, how can you sell something, get paid, and use that money immediately on another trade. To, to me, it was just like, why, why are they going to pay you up front? It, it, it didn't make sense. I'd never heard of it. And that's when I really started digging into to your course and learning about it. And I started putting on a few trades here and there. It, it, it just didn't come naturally to me, Clay, uh, at all. It, it, it it's even even to this day uh, trading advanced positions 
isn't just looking at a chart for me. It's, it's, you know, writing it out or, um, making a spreadsheet and doing the addition and the subtraction. And th- there's just so many moving parts when you're on that side of the fence that, I don't know, for me, making a mistake in that type of trading could have been a lot more difficult to recover from. And at the same time, the rewards were, or, or the probabilities were a lot higher that, you know, you're, you're going to make money on certain trades. So it, it just intrigued me. That That's what got me here from day one, just learning the markets. Okay, interesting. And I, I don't remember that. So that's a, a, not a matter at all of, hey, this fits better with my lifestyle, with my job, with my whatever it is. It was pure intrigue. And that makes sense. Maybe listener, you did a good job of kind of, because yeah, it is a bizarre concept. Wait, you're going to pay me up front. And then, um, so yeah, there, and that's just the wonderful world of options. And Chez, I mean, it's basically unlimited how many things you can do in the world of options trading, especially when you start to get into the selling premium end of things. And I toss this over to Chez because he's, um, as B has alluded to, he's done this many times before, but I mean, it's almost unlimited, isn't it, Chez, in terms of how you can approach this and put on trades? Well, the, yeah, and the cool thing about it, and we've touched on it before in other podcasts too, is that Mr. B and anybody else who trades these options, you know, as we call them advanced options, you can essentially structure how risky you want it to be, how not risky you want it to be, what percentage you have a probability of making money. You know, you you literally have the control of all of that, and it's not just like you put the position on and then, you know, um, oh, we'll, we'll work it from there. He essentially knows all of the data from a mathematical standpoint prior to putting the position on. So it, it literally is can fit almost anybody's style of trading and risk management. You know, if you say you only want to lose, you know, $50, you can structure a trade like that. You probably won't make too much on it, but you could structure a trade like that. And I do remember B always pushing back at the, the naked positions that, oh, you know, you could take these big losses, but um, I don't want to jump ahead, but is it safe to say you eventually got comfortable with defending losing positions? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, after I, I I can be very stubborn, so I don't know if if it worked to my advantage here, but by not trading naked positions for such a long time and only doing defined risk positions, which can be a lot more difficult to defend, um, it's. It just gave me time to sit back and watch other people and and watch the conversation and ask questions. And only about six months ago did I, I, I don't want to say get the courage, but maybe have the confidence because I, I now had the knowledge going in that if something went against me, I, you know, I don't have to panic. I don't have to uh, get out of it. I, I can just <laughs> take time, uh, roll it up, roll it down, roll it out in time. There's just so much that you can do. And absolutely. Now I, I do trade them, uh, naked positions. It, you know, I'll, I'll look at what the underlying is or, uh, put a little more consideration into it. Uh, not something that is known, you know, to have big gaps up and down, um, but rather something that's in uh, a steady channel or, uh, you know, a breakout pattern. But it's it's something I'll do now. I, I, I'm still I, – I don't want to say 100% comfortable with it because not just what you can lose, but – uh, and, and when I say lose, I, I want to use that term lightly because it, it's not a realized loss, but it's a loss that you'll have to carry in your portfolio until you know you you can get on the right side of it or, or break even. Um, but it, it uses a lot of buying power, and I'm not a person 
that likes to keep a huge amount of money in my trading account. I, the type of trading that I do nowadays doesn't require a lot of money. So to use up so much buying power on certain naked positions, it just doesn't make sense for what I'm trying to do at the moment. So um, I'm doing them less and less, uh, but I, I certainly, yeah, the, the confidence is there. I mean, you, you don't ever have to lose. Yeah. And what I, just as an observation listening is you're talking about all this uh, very carefully, but that's how you should be talking about this. There's nothing worse, and I know you've seen it be in the chat room, where people show up and you can tell they're just shooting from the hip and they're doing this, they're doing that, their strategy is focused on that, this and the other thing. And a lot of us were just sitting back saying, I don't think you realize how risky all that actually mm -hmm. is. So, but you clearly do, and that's why, like you said, you're not scared, you, you, you know, you had to work up enough confidence and enough knowledge, but you are, and, and for you out there as listeners, you should be approaching trading as a whole like B has been talking in a very careful manner because if you're just out there kind of willy-nilly, you don't really feel, you know, fear is not the right word, but you don't feel maybe a sense of respect. I can hear that's a better way yeah. to put it. Would you say, B, that you fully respect the whole concept of naked options? Is that what, what, what pretty much is kind of making you tiptoe? Is just the ultimate the respect that you must truly have towards all yeah, this? To, to me, it, I mean, respect's a great way to put it. And it's it, it's just taught me a lot about trading and a lot about myself and what I'm comfortable doing. And that ultimately is is helping me in other areas of trading because a, a lot of last year and, and as I said, you know, 2017, I was only trading advanced stuff um, or advanced setups. And it, there was definitely an extra, like an added stress at the end of the day. Um, a lot of the time when I was in a trade, especially like a defined risk trade, there were days that, it, it doesn't always make sense why your P&L is what it is in that trade. Uh, and, you know, the, again, there's a lot of moving parts that go into it. And, and there were times, you know, I, I carried a negative delta in, in, in my portfolio, but there were certain days where the market was, you know, super, super rare day. And I was still losing money. And then on a day where, you know, we had a 150 or 200 point move, I was making money. And I was like, but I'm carrying short delta here. This doesn't make sense. And again, it just, it, it takes you down another rabbit hole. And, and it's like, all right, well, what are you trading that's correlated to the spy that your deltas are? essentially being weighed against and and it just it 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 opens up so much more in what you can learn about trading that it's i mean you can just go on forever and ever talking about this stuff it's there, there are so many ways to trade with with advanced options and it it just I don't know, Clay, it, it wasn't sitting well with me for a while, especially towards the end of the year. And I, I've just decided now, uh, very recently, that, you know, I, I've traded many different ways and I've spent, I, I've been a member since 2014, I think. Yeah, you've been around a long time. And... It, it's got me thinking like I've, I started off trading, you know, just equities and then options came along and I did that. And then Forex ca came along and I was trading Forex and went back to options and then advanced and I, I jumped over there. And for the last four years, it's been just a learning process. I've never had 
you know, a, a massive like right home about kind of win where it was just, you know, every ball was out of the park. I, I, I haven't had one of those. Uh, but at the same time, I've never had a, a very big loss either. Um, I've been able to sustain and, and make money uh, just about, you know, every year, uh, even if it's only a very small amount. And it, it's really given me the ability just to see what I want to do and, and to be able to pull the trigger on a lot of different uh, possibilities and setups without having to think that much about it. Because, I, you know, I spent nearly a year doing each one of these things now. And it, it's been a great way to learn about them. So now, you know, today as an example, um, I made a couple of trades just uh, buying some calls and going long. I decided to sell some premium in UVXY because there was a pop this morning when the market opened up down. And um, I, I'm also looking at putting a strangle on in something else. So now I know how to do all of these things. And it's it, it's just making trading a little more enjoyable at the same time. It's, it's like I've... I've been searching for for what I wanted to do, and and it's it's definitely at a point where it, I've gone full circle. Like I always used to think, oh, you need twenty five k in your account so that you can get around the PDT rule, and now I'm like, if I've got five grand in my accounts, that's way more than I need for what I'm doing. And it's just absolutely. You know, it's just brought me to a point where I, I always used to think you need a lot of money to make money, and and you really don't. It's it's not like that at all. It really isn't. And my question to you, uh, just sitting here listening, this is all great stuff. But what what do you what do you attribute your success to? And I am defining success as uh, making money, yeah, and, and to your own self-admission. Yeah, it's not like I, I hit grand slams and have made killer money, but a lot of people would be jealous of that spot in and of itself because people um, maybe not listening to this podcast or maybe listening to this podcast or would be saying, holy smokes, that, those last couple of years, that was a lot of money in the downwards direction. But that's that's not your case. You know, You haven't made huge money, but... My question is, what do you attribute your just kind of account growth, account stabilization, account balancing to? I mean, um, because a lot of people, they, they can't sit here and say that. It's an absolute roller coaster ride in both directions. But for you, that's not the case. I mean, what do you think that is that? I, I know the answer here because you're, you talked about this in your last podcast. But, you know, for listeners out there, what would you attribute that to? Uh you know, it, I, I think it's a lot of things, Clay. It's uh, obviously education. You know, it, that's been the number one goal since I got here. I mean, that's... Uh, There's more, though. The... Just... <sighs> Patience. Um, I, I, let, me, let me ask you this, B, because this is kind of where I was headed. Looking at your show notes, you made the comment back episode 71 that, you know, taking a loss was never really a, a huge issue for you. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, you just never struggled with it like many others did. Do you still find that to be the case? Are you still good with just saying, you know what? I, I, peace out. I got to be out. Is that still one of your strong suits? Absolutely. I, I did it today. Um, Talk about it, good, because we all, we there's a lot uh, losing trades. It's always a, a a topic where, you know, it's just part of the game. There's no need to hide those. No, up, but, I uh, mean, yeah, so I, it's, what, what, it's, what happened yeah, today? It's not it's not all roses by any means. <laughs> um, nope, ever. And <laughs> uh, so if if you look at uh, TLT, I'll pull it up real fast. Uh, what time frame? Oh, just look at, at the daily. Still open. Okay. 
And for listeners out there, we're looking at it on January 10th of 18. So, uh, you can see where it gapped down yesterday, right under the 200. Yep. So, my plan before I got into this trade was to put a buy order in right around 125. I believe I was actually going to go in there at like 12505. It's kind of a nice location. And my stop was just under the 200 at 124. I believe it was 68. So I had the notes and and I had a plan to get in there and I've got a routine. I'm a creature of habit and I go through my routine in the morning and I get to work and I, you know, pull up my charts. And at that time, I usually go into work like 30 minutes early that that way I'm the first person there and it just gives me 30 minutes of peace and quiet and uh, I love my wife and, and my child but they're not morning people so I get out of the house as quickly as I can and and it lets me you know look at charts and look at some pre-market stuff and catch up on chat see what people are talking about I noticed TL, TLT had gapped down quite a bit and I get a, an entry, obviously, a uh, little lower than, than where I had planned. So market opens, I butcher the order when I'm trying to change it. I end up getting in just under the 200, right at like 124.80. And I'm going long, and this thing just starts bleeding to death. Yes, yes. And I'm like, what is... I can confirm B is not exaggerating. I'm looking at the chart right now. It started to bleed for sure. (laughs) And and I'm just sitting there, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, what am I doing here? And I, I... Eventually, like I didn't put a stop in. I didn't expect it to drop that quickly, but it did. And if you go and you look at the 15 minute here, uh, you can see right around 11 o'clock, it just kind of leveled out um, at the 124.27 range. I was like, you know what? I I just got to get out here. It's it's just not worth staying in. And I took the loss. I mean, it it wasn't nice. I I had to do it though. I, I'm not going to stay in. Look what happened today. I mean, it it gapped down another two dollars. It. And then it came. Now, I, have a, I, have, that, I have a question yeah. for you, though. Just, and this is this is just specific to TLT. So it has a history of gapping past the two hundred and then making sharp recoveries. Did at any point you decide? Well, since you had kind of you, you were stuck in that position because you didn't stop out right away, and you eventually took your lumps, and that's what you're supposed to do. Did you ever consider selling puts on this at any point? No, I didn't. But what I did do was keep it right on my list today. And I got in first thing this morning. That's a nice sell. And spent the whole day just making back what I lost. <laughs> I was gonna, you spent the whole yep. day rejoicing. <laughs> Holy smokes. Counting his cash. I, I'm sure you guys saw this morning. Alex said to me, please don't tell me you were naked on TLT last night. <laughs> Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. I do remember and I that. I said to him, no. 
So, uh, yeah, I, I made that one back. It was lucky, but it, 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 uh, no, 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 it wasn't lucky. No, no, that wasn't B, lucky at all. That wasn't lucky at all. This is what it was. You created your own luck. How you took the freaking loss yesterday. So today you gained back the loss and then did you go in the green some too? the made back the loss plus some or, or just no, break even? I was, I was even on that, but I, I had a, quite a nice day in UVXY today, which I, I did sell premium in shares and uh, I'm actually still in that. So, all right, well, I'm not done. I'm not done complaining about you. So, I mean, that's just, come on, B, you got to, you didn't luck out. You totally yeah. controlled everything. You created your own luck. You kept the loss small yesterday, which allowed you to have a good day today. I mean, if things had gone haywire, which they had the potential to do, because as, I mean, if you look at the chart, you can see that thing just kept on yeah, going it down. Yeah, fun. I mean, you could still be, you could be sitting here saying, Fellas, I am digging. I had a couple of good trades today, but I am still digging out of a hole that I created for myself. But you're not saying no, that, right? No, it's it's uh, again. I, I look. No one likes taking. Look, a I loss. appreciate your humility, <laughs> but at the same time, there's a fine line between humility and not giving yourself enough credit. And Ches, I'm not stepping out of bounds here, right? He definitely, quote unquote, created his own luck in this whole situation, didn't he? No, he, he absolutely did. That's why we both kind of jumped on him. We said, oh, I got lucky at a time. We're like, no, you really didn't. You just, you took your lumps like you're supposed to, and you planned the next trade, and that next trade totally paid for that loss you had to stomach yeah, the first time. That's how trading goes. We have goes. to. All of us, uh, and I, that I, I learned from everybody else. You, you, you can't spend a whole day getting over one trade that you lost and, and not make any other trades because you're, you're crying about it. If you know, then your size is just too big. Preach it. It's, uh, that I learned too. How though? <laughs> people want to know, people want to know so many people struggle with this. What is going on upstairs in your mind that I don't want to say makes taking losses easy, but like I said, you have, you know, episode 71, you're doing, doing well with that. Your account history is very clear. Yeah, you're not making killings, but you're also not blowing anything else up either. So, I mean, what what Jedi mind tricks, what are you doing upstairs in your mind that just makes it, all right, take the loss, and you actually take the loss? What's what's the secret sauce here? In in my head, every oh, single... Chaz, this could be a scary no, place. No, 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 I'm not going to oh, make boy. it scary. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. Hey, buddy. My dog just came in here. Sorry. Um, so to me, every single trade that I go into and I, I, I still do it every single time. I'll look at what I'm risking, not where my stop is, because to me, that's – it, you know, your stop can get hit. It doesn't mean you're going to get filled there. So to me, every single time I go into a trade, I actually say to myself, like if it's a $300 trade that I'm going into, I'll say to myself, you may not get this $300 back. Like the whole amount is gone. And I, I consciously say to myself, like, are you willing to risk this to make that? And if it makes sense to me, then I'm willing to risk it. And to me, that's enough. What would make sense to you? To me, that it, 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 it if I just let it go, then it, it's, any anywhere that I get out before that point, I've almost made money. And I mean, in the courses we do, Clay has referred to stopping out as you know a stop save. So if it makes logical sense to stop out and save yourself more money, then then that absolutely makes sense. But I want I want to loop back a little bit here. Correct me if I'm wrong, because most people do this, and this is why the this is if I had to pick one reason why most people don't ever last in trading long enough to give themselves a real chance is because they trade too large. Did at some point in your earlier, probably I guess we probably talked about this in the first podcast, but just to recap for listeners who are going to listen to this for the first time, 
did you trade too large when you started trading? And then eventually did you size down to the point where just like you said, um, some, of these, some of these trades, they're sized so that if it goes to zero, it goes to zero and you know, you're not going to lose sleep over it. Absolutely. Um, it, you, you can make enough money trading options with putting very, very little money on the line. And, and that's, if I'm understanding your question correctly, to me is, is what has led me here. It, I, of course, when I started, I was using larger amounts of money on a per trade basis, thinking that's how I'm going to make larger returns. It's not like that at all. Yeah, and that's uh, – I want people to really kind of you know rewind the podcast and listen to that a second or third time just to get it through your head. But if you had to put a percentage – of your account balance that you're putting on per trade, what do you think that would be? Is it like 10%, 5%, 1%? You know, what, what amount of capital from your entire account are you putting on per trade to do the trading you're doing now? The most I will put on is 2%. Amazing. Amazing. Cause I got people, you know, I, we talk to people on the customer service side all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm all in on this one trade or no, no, I only use 50% of my account on this one trade. And we're just like, Oh goodness. No. And B's over here using 2%. Um, actually, uh, Alex and I, and, and, and we'll talk about this in a sec, but, um, you know, there, there's some people in the chat that, uh, I actually, you know, chat to outside of chat, and, and I know many people do that, but I, I found a big part of my growth was uh, reaching out to some of the, the other traders here. And I, I've recently, you know, reached out to a few more people. And, and again, it's just been something I've done over a long period of time, but um, it's it's given me – the opportunity to to grow so much and Alex and I were chatting this morning. I, I believe I, I sent him an email and I said to him, Hey, this is what I'm looking at this morning. And he said to me, uh, his reply was, uh, I think how much are you, are you uh, going into this trade with? And I replied back laughing and I said to him, I'm 80% cash right now. Like I, I've, I've got to get into some trades because I, I feel like I'm not doing enough, but I've got, I think six trades on right now that I'm very happy with. And, and I, you know, it's why use any more. And it sounds like you're totally comfortable with it. So my question, uh, what, what is your typical, you know, your option farm? So how many positions are you typically on? And from what you've been saying, it sounds like you're kind of back to, to going long options once in a while. So is going long, is that something you do on a typical daily basis while you have your, your farm going on in the background? Or I, I guess what's kind of a typical, let's not say a day, let's, what's a typical week look like? How many uh, options, uh, farm trades are you putting on? And then how many more so kind of day trades, if you will, are you doing in terms of going long the premium as opposed to shorting it? Day trades are only becoming uh, a, th a current thing right now. Um, I haven't been day trading at all for the last year. Um, the last... Right, and I, I know that you were... Bring introducing that yeah. back in your strategy because you commented, you know, it feels good to have spent all those, you know, the year on going long and then the year yeah. on advanced options. And, you know, you feel like you have kind of multiple tools in your your tool belt here. But it sounds like you're literally just kind of dipping your toe into reintroducing the, the, the day trading oh, yeah. back into the yeah, equation. Absolutely, Clay. Um, so what, we're 10 days in. Um, we've had, say six or seven trading days of the year and I've probably made, let's see, uh, 
maybe I made like 15 trades, uh, of which one, two, three, four, five of them I'm still in. So, uh, yeah, I've got some swings going and, um, I, to me, I'm not really a, a day trader. I, I can't do what you do. Um, I can't do what Mario does or what Hooch does. Um, I've tried day trading. It, it's not for me. I, I know that. So I'm not going to do it. Um, the, the shortest trade I'll be in might be like an overnight trade. But I, I, I'm just not good at you know, the market opens and I scalp something for 15 or 20 cents. I, I can't do that. I'll lose money all day long doing that. And I mean, I think that I bring this up all the time as well. And, uh, you know, it's something I really, really, truly believe is that no two people trade in the market the same. Yes, there's absolutely people who trade very, very similarly. And I always use the example of, you know, Mario and Clay and Nate Wilson. They're very, very good at scalping. Very short. You know, some of Clay's trades are like less than mm -hmm. three seconds. It always, it's mind blowing to me and it's totally awesome. But here's the thing, you know, just like you said, I'm in the same boat as you tried it. And I'm sure if I practice it for a long, long time, I would eventually be able to pick it up. But it just doesn't come naturally to me. I'm not saying it should, but here's the thing. There are millions of ways to make money in the market. You don't have to only do what one person mm -hmm. does to mm -hmm. make money. And I mean, we our, our entire community is just a walking, living, breathing thing where, uh, you know, most people don't trade <laughs> the same at all. Some people are trading on the hourly and some people are trading on the 15 minute and some people are, you know, being contrarians and some people are being trend traders. And that's the beauty of the market, in my opinion, is that. It's not like, uh, you know, if you're going to go be an accountant, you have to do accounting a certain way. There's like a standard uh -huh. for that, and that's the way it is. With trading, I don't want to say that you can be creative, but in a way, you kind of you kind of can. I guess creative wouldn't be the right word, but you can find your place in the market. And correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like since you've been working this and, you know, with your, your job and your schedule and everything like that, you know, would you recommend advanced options and shorting options as like a swing trading strategy um, that would be good for people who, you know, don't have time to sit at the desk the entire day? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's you can swing options all day long. Um, I Yeah, I, I work a full time job. Uh, you know, I'm at my desk by eight o'clock in the morning and I don't leave it until 530 but I've got several monitors there and I can have my trading platform pulled up kind of on half of one of the monitors. And it's not up there all day long. You know, my, my boss can only take my trading at work so much and <laughs> then he starts laying down the whip. So... You know, we, I've been there for a few years and we've kind of reached an understanding that I'm going to trade at work and he doesn't really mind as long as I get my work done. So I have to respect that as well. And I, I cannot have my platform up there to watch every tick. So I set alerts in my charts all over the place. Um, I set alerts on other things that I'm watching, you know, it. if my phone beeps and it says buy one call of, um, you know, the queues now, I will log into my platform. I will see where it is and I will buy it because I've, I've, I've done a lot of the homework like in the evenings and it, to me, it, it's just a comfortable place now. It's, I've just found a very comfortable balance and that's my goal for 2018 is to, to be more balanced in my trading, to uh, do a lot more charting in the evenings because swing trading is my strength and 
And that's where I want to apply everything I've learned now into doing it. And that's also why I've reached out to some of the other guys now that are doing really well with that. Um, obviously, Hooch, uh, uh, Fletch, uh, Tim Fletch, he's been fantastic, uh, you know, so helpful. And I, I owe a lot to, to guys like that, to, to even to Alex. You know, Alex and I chat every single day. I, I send him setups that I find. He sends me setups. Um, it, it's just good for me to sometimes have those people to also fall on, um, you know, when I got questions and, and uh, just to learn from and, and stay in tune with, uh, you know. No, that's that's good stuff. And um, I was going to say that's the perfect ending of the podcast with your goals, but I, I want to ask this. Maybe this will be a good little rabbit hole, but from a very practical sake, did you have a conversation with your boss uh, about that you wanted to try? But how did you actually do that? Because I'm, I, I, I'd be willing to to put down some hard cold, some cold hard cash that there's listeners right now saying, "Huh, I wonder how he pulled that off with his boss. Like, how did he establish this kind of understanding with his boss that he would be trading? So, how did all that actually break down? I mean, do you have any advice for people that maybe? They're at work, they're in your situation, but they're not quite sure how to approach this to try to kind of, in your words, you know, form an understanding that you are going to be trading for the day. So how would all that go down? Um, I'm just the, the kind of person that I, I will call a spoon a spoon. And, you know, they, they, I, I'm quite a loud person in in a room <laughs> sometimes uh, uh, my wife tells me i can be very annoying um so i mine tells yeah, me the same I thing know. It, it's it's amazing uh, yet we <laughs> we stick around and um it's I, I wanted them to know what i was passionate about outside of work uh, you know i enjoy what i do i enjoy where i work it's very convenient for me and for where i'm at in my life right now um but we you know it's like six dudes all working in very uh, like we don't all have our own offices we we kind of work in a very open floor plan and we spend, as you guys, well, not you guys, Clay goes to work in his undies. Uh, so does Chiz. I don't know about Nate, <laughs> but. It's cold where I'm at to do that nowadays. <laughs> it, you know, I want to be interested in what these guys do outside of work because we we spend more time with each other than we do our own families. Um, so it's. It's just, uh, it came up as a topic, Clay. Uh, I found out that my boss is, uh, you know, invests very heavily with his 401k and his retirement and other money that he's made. And it, it just became a, a topic of conversation. I'd ask him what stocks he was into, um, what he was looking at buying, and, and I'd give him my opinion on it. And then he'd ask questions. Hey, how do you know that? Or, hey, that bounced exactly where you said it would. How did it do that? And the conversation just grows from there. And it, it got to a point where even now, if he's thinking about something, he'll ask me to have a look at it, at the chart and give him advice on it. So it, it's, it, I, I guess, one hand washes the other. Okay, so in other words, yeah, you say you're loud in the room, but what I gathered, and it sounds like for you it all started off by simply listening to the other person. You listened, he made comments about his 401k, and then because you listened, you were able to kind of grab onto that and find common ground, and that common ground eventually led to where things stand right now, where you have formed the understanding, um, where you can trade, yeah, but as long as your work is done. Is that essentially kind of how it all went down? Is you just, It just all started off with originally just listening to somebody else? I've, I've learned in this life that uh, listening is far more powerful than, than, than just running your mouth. And, and most of the time when I do talk first, 
it's uh, it's garbage. So <laughs> I, I I tend to listen a little longer and 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 you know try think about what's going to come out because uh, you can learn so much just just by listening and and it, it's very powerful. So for me, yes, it's just it's been a helpful tool, but it, it's just another thing. It's it's. I don't know. I, I'm always learning, and and that's what keeps me interested in it in in trading because the, there's so many patterns that repeat themselves, yet no day is exactly the same. It's you know there's always something else to deal with. So it's it it's fun. That was that was poetry. No, there is many patterns that repeat themselves, yet no day is ever the same. That's that was good stuff there, Chaz. Yep, that was and it's it's totally true, and it's funny how this stuff is in kind of cycles and repeats itself. But I mean, you nailed it. No two days ever look yeah. the exact same. You know, not even yeah. It's it's amazing how the market works. And correct me if I'm wrong. Not to you know drag this on any longer, Clay. But would you say that? The interesting thing, the thing I find fascinating about the market personally is that it, it, I know, it, I'll never have it just figured out. Oh, I know, I, I got it. It's done. I figured it out. It's almost like this continuous challenge of me versus you know reading the people and figuring out where I'm going to have my edge. I don't know. I love that kind of engagement. It's it's something that will never end. I will. I'll be comfortable putting on trades and I'll spot my setups. And sure, comfort is one thing, but. It kind of never ends. It's just a challenge that is like always going to be there, and I don't know. I personally love that. It, yeah. yeah, I mean, I do and, until it's it's not working. <laughs> but uh, I just say that because at the time of this recording, uh, yesterday I had a rough morning, and I posted it on social media, where I literally, like, I didn't do anything different. Like, I was applying my system, yet I, I couldn't do anything right, and I was in the hole for the morning. I'm just thinking, what the, you know, but... That's to Chess's point is you just the, the market is is just it's the same, but it's not right, the same. But you came back today and, uh, and and not to interrupt you, but you came back today and you 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 did your same routine and, and you approached the market the same way you do every single morning. You didn't approach it differently today because you had a a, a shite day yesterday. Excuse me. <laughs> no, and that's absolutely right. And actually to kind of add one more layer, I just kept on chugging yesterday and I eventually, you know, made back the losses and still I think I closed up. I don't remember what I closed up, but I know it was in the green. Um, but, you know, in B's words, I created, or no, I got lucky. B, I got lucky <laughs> yesterday. I, I uh, no, you, no, you but do. that's you, why. You, and this keep, is, you, you keep banging your head and banging your head and eventually, the, you know, you're not banging your head anymore. Eventually you bang through everything and uh, yeah, you're in the green. You're smiling, and and you're and you're feeling good. But it all and this will be a good ending point. But it all circles back to B talking about his trade. If he had never just taken that loss, kept it controlled, then you know today's entire podcast could have been him talking about you know during that segment digging out of a hole. I, I guess to pat myself on the back a little bit. Yesterday, same thing. I if, if I would have just gotten stubborn and thought what? No, 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 no then yeah, maybe I'm still trying to dig out of the hole right now. But just listeners, take losses. That doesn't make you a bad trader. Now, if the loss came from you being a degenerate gambler, that's apples and oranges. But assuming you have a logical trade plan, you apply the trade plan, you follow the trade plan, and it just didn't work out, hey, there, there's that does not make you a bad trader at all. And as you know, Chaz, you know, let's do the trifecta here. You didn't happen to have a losing trade today or yesterday or anything that you can pile on here or are we uh am i barking up the wrong tree uh i didn't make money <laughs> today but when i lose 16 bucks on the day it's not something i'll ever carry oh, yeah, over with me i peanuts. also don't i don't i don't ever yeah i don't ever have i guess here's the thing for me personally i don't ever let my losses get big enough to it bothers me to the next day is it annoying when it happens absolutely and if it's a cheap shot it's even more annoying but here's the thing i never let anything spiral out of control because of the one time when we when we re we did that re interview when we were uh, where were we Columbus Clay where we did yeah. the video podcast yes yes and yes. I saw a minus four thousand dollar loss oh. on a trade and even oh, though I came right. back to make money on that trade <laughs> I will never ever ever let myself what get in a that? position that like that again. so I always and, uh, 
No, that was trading that futures. Oh. Yeah, I thought yeah, futures. I had like four, 14 ES contracts. Yeah. So when you have like a small account, you shouldn't really, you know, trade yeah. that big. But uh, anyways, I, I the, the the reason why I, I never ever let anything spiral out of control is because I can get up the next day and be completely level headed and. You know, I'm not worried about making up sixteen dollars tomorrow or by the end yeah, of the week. Yeah, man, you know? we're four thousand dollars. Yeah, that's that's yeah. That, that'll yeah. take a while, but uh, I, yeah, that, I that wanna, is a great I story. I want to come it's home important. from work and not have to worry about what happened when I was trading. I want to spend time with my wife and my and my family. Yep, a- absolutely, and it's uh, that's why you know. What do you mean by trading is a mental game? The conversation we just had. We traders are just like everybody else. We want to come home from quote unquote work and have a good evening, be happy, and just enjoy life as a whole. But it's hard to enjoy life when uh, you know you have a just big losses hanging over your head or or anything like that. So it's annoying, like Chess said, absolutely. But it's so worth it when you just stop and think about it. Like sixteen dollars, yeah. Come on, you know it, it, it. It's so much more easier to overcome. So looking at the time here, B. Um, on the family note, I'm sure we all want to go some spend time with our family. It is uh, an evening time as we're yes, recording thanks, this. Yes, thanks, guys. But, uh, do you have any final? Do you have any final things though? Any any last bits of wisdom? We'll we'll definitely have you back again. Um, but anything else that you wanted to touch on? I that, look, f- uh, I look very forward to seeing you fellas. What next week? Yeah, it's next week. Uh, for listeners' context, it will have already happened. But part of Clay Trader uh, in the inner circle, I should say, is. Um, this is going to be our sixth one, but we do meetups around the country, and uh, it is cold here in Michigan, so we're going to go down to Bee's neck of the woods uh, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and yeah, Bee's going to be there. So I yeah, literally I mean, I next my week when like I say that an hour before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you were supposed to buy it like what? Um, hey, but anyways, yeah. Hey, so for it. listeners out there, hey. This is, uh, you know, I get a lot of people are talk a game about, oh, yeah, we're a community. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But maybe other people have meetups, but, yeah, we're actually going to go hang out. And I think right now, yeah, we must be at like 35, 36-ish Yeah, it's going to be good. Plus myself, Chez, Nate. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good time for sure. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm sure Nate Wilson will be chasing you around. How are you looking forward to that? Yeah, yeah. Is your I hope your wife doesn't get jealous with Nate no, Wilson. You know, no, he's probably she won't. finally somebody to distract Nate Wilson besides <laughs> me. <laughs> That's actually be never mind. Ches will be there, so poor Ches is probably going to have to bear the brunt of that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, fellas, I appreciate <laughs> Anyways, it uh, very much. Yeah, B, thank you for hanging out, and uh, I'll see you in the chat room tomorrow, and I will uh, see you next week down in uh, Florida. So take Absolutely. care, buddy. Appreciate it. Have a good evening, fellas. Yeah. One final thing here before you listeners out there, before we go, if you're listening at claytrader.com, the show notes page, click that share button, leave us comments down below. We will read those and reply to those. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure to check out the rest of the channel. Lots of other videos other than these podcasts, live trades, quick tip videos, vlog videos. In fact, a quick tip for the uh, a vlog is we are gonna be vlogging the meet and greet. So if you're kind of curious to see how what we're talking about right now went down, again, claytrader.com, check out the vlog section. I think it'll be up and posted by then. Um, and then finally, if you're listening on iTunes or any of the other podcast players, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And then especially on iTunes, if you could leave us a, a good solid star rating, that would uh, be very much appreciated. So thank you again, B. Thank you again, Chez. Thank you to all of you as listeners. We will see you back next week. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com.